Ah, error message again. I literally have to fix this error. In the description, there's a timestamp. Quick disclaimer. Back up your data before attempting some of this method. Ah. Enough is enough. Let's move into the first method. Update your Mac from the App Store to install or delete immediate Mac OS that was automatically installed in Mac. We will again install it from the App Store. Open up your Finder and then move to the application folder. Once you move there and you can literally able to see all of the applications over here including some latest operating system that was automatically installed in your Mac. In my cases I was running the Mac OS monitor right now in the behind the scenes and that is the reasons I will take one of the software as an example. You should also follow the same process when installing latest versions of the Mac OS installer from the application. Suppose let's say I'm going to take the VM. Right click to that application and click move to trash. Still it's not yet finished. So you have to open up the trash then just look for the same applications that you have moved to the trash. Just right click to it and then delete immediately. And that's it. Right now Next step was to just open up the App Store. Whenever you open up the App Store and then search for the latest version of the Mac OS that you have already uh, delayed. So right now the latest version of the Mac OS was the Mac OS Ventura. So just click on get and install it and after successfully it has installed and hopefully this particular installer is will going to work for you. And the reasons I was showing this particular method first was because whenever I was facing the same error when updating to the Mac OS monitory, at that time I contacted the Apple support and then Apple support gave me the same technique which I just showed you right now. And that definitely worked for me. And we need to understand why it's occurring on the first place. The original Apple hard drive was not installed on my Mac. How can I determine whether my Mac is having the original Apple hard drive or was it from a third party external hard drive? Hey, this is your editor here. So for this particular clip, you must have to increase the volume of your phone in order to hear me sound. These are two ways I will show you. The first and most easiest one was just clicking the command button from your keyboard and the spacebar together. Once you do that, the Siri will pop up from nowhere and then we will ask Siri, Hey Siri, open for us the system information. Hey Siri, open for us system information. From there, storage device. Here you will see the storage device name. This will indicate whether your external storage device was from a third party or from the app. If it was from the third party in default, you are going to see the name of the external storage device in majority of the cases. For example, right now you can see my Mac was containing a third party storage device and there is the results you will see the name was Subbrand Rocket Nano. On the other hand, if it was having the original Apple storage hard drive, then it should be written like Apple SSD and the model number. The first method that didn't work was the second solution. The second method was to install to the earliest version first and then install to the latest version. And you might be thinking, okay man, how in the world can I be able to find out the old Mac OS versions? Don't worry, I will show you step by step how you can able to do that. But before that, just quick reminder, try to back up your most important information or data from your Mac. So just open the Chrome or maybe Safari and visit this particular Apple site. And I will put the link of these sites in the description you can just click it and visit it. After you visit this particular site, scroll it down and you can see all the old Mac OS installer over here. Right now, we will just take as an example the Catalina. So click to it and then it will ask you to just cancel or open, click on open app store. It will redirect you to the app store and wait some time. It will definitely going to open the Mac OS Catalina installer. So right now for your job is to just get it or install it and then run it and set up everything in your Mac, the oldest version. 
Yo, why do I need to do that in the first place? Tell me the reason. If you upgrade to the later versions of Mac OS than the current OS that you are having, but earlier versions of Mac OS than the latest version of Mac OS that you want, then this could be a very helpful step to have a successful and smoother transition of the Mac OS that you want to upgrade. And the reason I was saying this particular process to follow is because if you try to upgrade the latest version of Mac OS, let's say you are having the very oldest version of mac os right now and you want to upgrade to the latest or better version of mac os in that case is there could be a compatibility issues and arise or maybe some sort of error that you can face and to clarify the statement that i made i will give you one of the example what do i mean so let's say you are having the mac os name is uh, Sarah, and so it is a very old version of mac os so in that case what you can do is you can just transfer to the mac os high Sarah, and then mac os major v and then mac os kt and then macOS Big Sur if that is available. If not, then what you can do is that you can move to the macOS Monitory and then eventually this version of macOS that is macOS Ventura, which is right now available in App Store. Nah. Let's move into the third method. The third option is to just install the latest version of Mac OS to the recovery mode. And especially if you're having a problems with your Mac OS EFI partition, that problems is preventing the operating system installer to check with the firmware. Right now, the question would be arise, okay, but why did the firmware need to check with the installer? To answer this question is quite simple. The firmware just need to ensure that particular operating system is compatible with your hardware as well as software and to give the best solutions is just create the new EFI partitions and after you create the EFI partitions then only you will going to erase the existing Mac OS that you are have and once you erase that and then you will going to update the latest version of Mac OS to the recovery mode so right now you could be getting very skeptical like okay why is the tutorial where you are showing well here is two of the video that I have included in this particular tutorial I will be adding the link in the description so you can easily just access to that video so the first one is from the apple software in apple software channel they have also created this particular tutorial in a very brief manner which means in two to three minutes video where they have explained what you have to do and how you have to accomplish this particular method easily let's say you want much more details of this method so if you want more details then i would recommend you one of the second channel that's name is mzs and i would also link the videos on the description so you can able to click it and access to it. Then this video is quite lengthy because he has provided much more details and information so that videos could be around 10 minutes or 6 minutes, 7 minutes. Quick reminder again that these particular methods will going to delete or erase your existing files data that you are having so it's better to back up your data before attempting this method. Third option that didn't work, what is next? Let's try with the fourth method. The four options could be just open the Apple menu and go after to the system preferences and then just look for the start up disk, click on it, unlock it. I'm going to put my own startup disk password. All right, so right now just click on the restart over here. And the question is, okay, why do I need to put, click on the restart button? Whenever you will click on the restart button, the ongoing files, tasks, programs will get interrupted and it will get closed. And after some time, your Mac will get rebooted and freshly, same like waking up early in the morning. Your Mac will go through a startup sequences and then the operating system will going to load directly from the disk and here is the one thing will going to happen if you are having a software issues those particular issues will going to get solved and secondly is that if there would be a clear temporary catches can be prevented or that can also be removed especially if those temporary catches are preventing to install the latest version of the Mac OS then that can also be get clear after you have restarted everything then you can try to just update the latest versions by going here and software update update so more information and then click install now or you can literally just open the app store and then search for the specific mac os monitor that you want or this particular website i will just put the link in the description you can just whichever mac os versions that you want and then you can literally install it ah 
Man. What would the fifth option? Fifth. In the fifth method, you will going to install the Mac OS, the latest version of Mac OS, to the external storage device. So let's say you are the Mac user who is not having the original Apple storage drive. In that case, is what you can do is just take two different Mac. So the first Mac one that was running the latest version of Mac OS Monitor, for example, Mac OS Monitor that is the latest version, and Mac two that was not running any sort of latest version of Mac OS Monitor. However, you are trying to update to the latest version of Mac OS Monitor. In this case, is what you're going to do is just take a USB drive or any sort of external storage device, just plug into the Mac that was already running the latest version of Mac OS Monitor. Then what you're going to do next was just install that particular Mac OS Monitor to your USB drive. And after it has successfully installed, then just take this same USB drive to the Mac 2 in which you will just plug in and try to boot it the operating system boot the Mac directly from the external storage device such as the USB drive. Right now you went between car. Do you are literally just saying all those tutorials to your mouth? Well, where is the main tutorial showing step by step? Well I will just name two videos. The first videos is from the 92 where he has also explained how you have to do this particular tutorial step by step. And the second video was from the IMAT where he also explained this a bit more detail step by step and by the way I'll just put the link both of the videos in the description so you can just easily access to it. What about the six method? Six method. And the six method, what you have to do is just manually update the firmware and then trying to update the latest versions of the Mac OS. And the Apple, they're kind enough to allow you to update your firmware with the third party SSD. However, there is one thing that you have to remember your current versions of the firmware must be this specific version that is starting with 195, blah, blah, blah. And you might be thinking, okay, man, how can I identify whether I am having having the exact same versions or later versions of the firmware right now and I will show you just in a second how to do that. This is one of the easiest way that you can able to identify. First of all just click on this particular search bar and then search for the system information and then just click enter. Once you enter, then you will notice your hardware overview. You will notice the model number, model identifiers, and if you read below, you will going to identify there was something called the system firmware version. And I'm going to highlight it over there. For me, it was showing 451. And as I told you earlier that the Apple, they want around 195,000 our embo so you must ensure that you should have that particular firmware versions before proceeding with this particular technique after you have identified your firmware versions right now the last process is you mean is to just update the firmware and then update to the latest versions of the mac os for this method i will put all the steps that you have to follow in the screens and by the way these steps was taken from the iBoss soft and they will also cover most of the methods whichever we cover in this particular video so you can also refer to iBoSoft articles where you can get further more details about a specific methods or particularly in this method all of this method didn't work of course the final and the last method in the final method you will going to use open code legacy pressure to update the latest version of mac or and especially if you're having the older version of mac for example 2010 or maybe 2015 mac in that case is I would recommend you to just use the open code legacy picture and then I'm dead to the latest version of the Mac OS. Right now in your mind you could be thinking come on man this could be absolutely confusing or it could be complicated how in the world I can able to accomplish this task. No worry, I will be including the all the most important videos that will provide you with uh, more information, tutorials of these specific methods in order to accomplish much more easily. Here is the video number one, video number two and there is the video number three. And then bring us to the end of this video. Uh, did we win? If none of this method managed to solve your problem, fear not, my friend. Sim, leave your comments below. We will activate our emergency tank squad. That's it. 
Emergency squad meeting. Our crack team of redditors and experienced troubleshooter will swoop in like a superhero. And they will going to share their wisdom and will guide you towards to the light of solution. We've assembled a crack team, chief. So don't be despair. Help is on the way. Peace. And may the tech forces be in your favor.